Share the mug. Gotta share the mug. This is the uh, 2022, right? Yeah, 2022 Crash of the Cure mug. So those of you who were there in Vegas two years ago, when we had uh, the big Chiro and Chris showdown for the, uh, for the, 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 what do we call that thing? The, whatever that, that term they were playing was called. Um, cancer for Steve pressed by one. This is the official one and only in existence coffee mug for that. Unless you want to buy one, by the way, these are, I'm not trying to hawk shit, but I think this is a great mug. Um, yeah, they're on there. I think if you look at the video, you can go to the, the thing and buy them anyway. Um, good morning and happy. What is today? Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Um, it was not a happy Tuesday in the garage. I can tell you that if you watch my uh, daily paycheck today, another day. So Friday, Monday, today, ass, ass, and ass. Just three terrible shooting days. Luckily today, I didn't go out. I didn't play. I played the super conservative strategy, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, we survived it today, but man alive. What a, what a, what a horrible set of shooting. Um, what else is happening in the world here? Um, I don't know. There's a little conflict going on in the Middle East, which is interesting. If you're watching the news, my God. Um, not, 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 that, not that I'm giggling about what's going on, but my God, you watch the, the mental gymnastics that are going on here between everybody on both sides of this thing. It's, 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 at, it, it's like the, the spotlight is shining, right, on how um, – I'm not going to get political here, but the spotlight is shining on just how divided we are. My God. Um, it's un it's unbelievable how divided we are over something that's not even happening here. Um, but it highlights how divided we are and everything else. And I think in craps um, and in gambling, we're also divided. It's it's like a house divided it cannot stand or whatever. Um, we have all these weird like things where people are just kind of diametrically opposed to each other on what seemingly is simple things, right? Math comes to mind, right? The whole idea of all this math. I know it's not exciting stuff, but it highlights the fact that there are people who just are just like, that's what they believe, right? It's all or nothing on that, or it's all or nothing the other way. You know, tomorrow we're going to talk about variants and Thursday trends, and it's going to be this whole thing. You watch, you watch the chat, how it explodes when I start talking about trends. Um, and it's needless. Dice control, same thing, right? Dice influence, same thing. It's such a, it's a, and people get so siloed and they get in, in their little, their little camps and cults and whatever you want to call it. It's crazy town. And I think if you look at the world right now, it's it's just we are a microcosm of what's happening out here, which is everybody is in these these brick silos anymore. We can't seem to break free and just kind of, I don't know, be real anyway. Ah, let's get to the real. Let's get the real show here, shall we? Let's get to the real thing and talk about important stuff like craps um, to note. The shooters tournament is uh, still going. I think we've got like three or four people left. I'm one of them. Um, myself, Pops, a couple other people are going to go uh, tonight and tomorrow, I think, and maybe one guy on Friday, and then that's going to be it. We'll know the top 16. I can tell you this, based on what I did today, it ain't going to be me. I'm shooting tonight with Chris from Dice DGen. There's no way I get past 17 with the way I'm shooting right now, um, unless we have a miracle run out there. I'm telling you what, it, is, it has been the worst shooting um, in, in, in three days in a row that I've had in a long time. I mean, I, I shoot bad, but usually, like, not – so consecutively uh, it is what it is i'm saying here page have a good week it ain't going to be a good week it's been a bad week um it's been it's been a bad while so we have to get back we have to get back off the schneid here and start getting that thing to work um as far as today's show goes we're going to talk about short-term and long-term play and i don't have the answer for you i have thoughts on it but I, and i want you to kind of see again some some math-based thoughts on short-term versus long-term play and kind of where you see your your place in the world and uh, not surprisingly, um, I'm going to land on the I prefer short term versus long term side of things. But let's talk about why some of that is. And before we do that, um, jump into the daily paycheck. So the overall results here are <clears throat> nothing changed today. We tied, played the come ladder basically for an hour and tied, which is normal for that strategy. That strategy, um, there was a point in time there where I was actually um, up 10 units. We were playing with quarters, and I was actually up more. I was actually up, up eleven or twelve units at one point. I just kept playing it, you know, just ran the money out. Um, but that thing works. Like that strategy is is a little bit boring, but it works. Um, in terms of, it's pretty low volatility. Like over the course of a long time, today was a, not a long big numbers day, but it was long ish, hundred and some rolls today. We ended up in a tie, like you kind of should. Like that strategy, you're going to win or lose the house edge, I guess, over the course of um, a long number of rolls. There was a short-term burst in there where we were up, I think, 12 units, which is great. You know, 25-hour bets, you know, being up 
couple hundred, couple two, three hundred bucks was great for that strategy. I mean, think about that, right? For as bad as I throw, we were up about 250, 300 bucks at one point. That's not too terrible. Um, <clears throat> ended up burning at the end there, but so, but so what? That's the one I tell you about. Um, that that daily that uh, daily pick, that um, whoops, that uh, come ladder is one that I played like for years. Like when I first came up in this game, one of the first couple of guys that kind of took me out of their wing when I was younger, I learned a couple of things. I learned a little bit of dark side play. And the way the dark side play that I learned was a, a don't pass bet, jack odds on it, come in at EC, take the odds off and have two flats. That was my first plays. That can be a little bit crushing though, right? You can get canned on some of that. Another guy taught me this come ladder strategy, <clears throat> which, you know, I was buying in, in Atlantic city in the, in the late eighties for a hundred bucks at a $3 table. And that's all I had. Right. So, um, my only spare money was the hundred bucks that I had. So when it got to like the, the $12 bet, it'd be like a $3 bet, a $6 bet, a $12 bet. I was sweating that $12 big time sweating that 12 bucks. But as you can see, you can play that thing. And what I did today was 50 minutes of playing going fast, right? That simulates probably two hours of play of live play, maybe, maybe less than maybe more than two hours of play as many roles I got in today that you can see why that strategy was the way that I kind of stayed afloat while my wife and my parents were playing slots for eight, nine hours at a time. Right. That's what I did. That's, I learned that play so long ago and it's one of my go-tos because it is so here and it's designed kind of for that, right. Designed to give me some time. I think it might be a good cruise ship strategy. You know, we'll see. Um, yeah. Anyway, there's that. I didn't play the big, the big guns today. I just did not, didn't have it. I didn't, didn't feel like I wanted to go out there with the big money and thank God I didn't, I would have got killed today. So, um, bummer. We would have burned our bankroll like probably five times today if I tried it. So yeah, nice settled tie day today. We'll go back at it tomorrow. And, um, yeah, let's get into it here. Let's talk about some of the, some of the math stuff again. I want to get back into where I was yesterday. So here we are again in, in gambling 301, which is all about the math. And this is session eight. Can you believe we're already eight sessions into this thing? Session eight of gambling 301 is going to be about short-term versus long-term play. And I think this is an interesting one because we spent time in our previous session really getting into the law of big numbers, right? We took about, and again, if you remember the, the lecture on law of big numbers is that no matter what kind of volatility you got in the short term, and you were going to see some quick little runs here. The, the short-term high volatility, big wins, big losses in the short run, it doesn't matter in the long run. And you're going to see that today. The casino's playing that long game. So you might have 100 rolls where you've only got 10, six, 10 sevens come out, right? You might have 100 roulette spins where 65 of them are red. And you're like, man, we are just bucking the trend over here, right? Bucking the expectation. The casino doesn't really care about that because they know that the closer you get to a billion, the tinier that percentage actually is. And when you look at like, we saw the Delta yesterday, a short-term 10, 10 unit swing or, or, or 10 outcome swing is big in terms of the percentage difference. But in the long term, that percentage is very, very tiny. And I'll show it to you again because I think it's an important thing for us to see. Anyway, getting into it here, this is my 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 go-to statement all the time, right? I, I believe, I don't believe I know, you can be exposed to the casino in a number of ways, right? One way you can be exposed is with your money. Like what percentage of your bankroll is on that table? That's one way you can be exposed. Another way you can be exposed is to have too many ways to lose. What beats you, right? How many things can beat you? In other words, you look at like a hopping bet. Like I'm just gonna bet the, hop the hard 10. Well, 35 things beat you right? You're exposed to massive amounts of numbers in that case, right? Versus placing the 10 where you're exposed to six ways to lose. So you have the amount of money you bet. The number of things that beat you is another exposure. The biggest exposure though is time, I think. And I say this time is your enemy. I've always said that the longer you're there, it always feels like you go down, right? Today's a good example. In my, in my daily paycheck show, I was up at one point about 10, 12 units. We ended up in a tie. Because over time, you start getting the slot. You're going to be up a little bit, down a little bit. And the trick to this game, you know, is, is, is not getting those downs, right? Not being there long enough to get the downs, right? So whether it's the law of large numbers, the house edge, or probability, biting in the rear end, 
right? The longer you're gambling, the worse it's going to be for you. True statement, right? And the question I've got has always been, can working a short game make a difference? Can that be the, the kind of the, I hate to say the key, but could that be one of the keys we have here, right? So here's the short game you think you're playing, right? And I think this is an important thing to look at. This is a Windcraft run I did last night where, you know, at one point we, we had lost about, I don't know, 500 bucks roughly. At one point we we're up about 200 bucks, right? You're gonna have this big swing and this big swing in both directions, right? And that is a typical, that, that was, by the way, that's 100 rolls. That simulates one time around the table. Maybe, you know, 10 people getting eight to 10 shots and whatever it is, right? That's one trip around the table. That's a short game. That's what you think you're playing. You think you're playing in that world, okay? The truth about that world is this. Probability will rarely, if ever, manifest itself in one session. You'll almost never see a perfect 36 rolls. Even in 100 rolls, you're not going to, typically see 16 sevens, you know, five or, or uh, 11 or 13 sixes and 13 eight. You're not going to see the exact number of things you're supposed to see. You're just not. Um, even in a small group of sessions, you won't see that. Um, it takes a long time to start seeing the actual kind of expectations kind of play themselves out. Um, in the short sessions, those short games, that's where the real money is won or lost. You can see here, right? In this short session, you would have lost 500, won 200. Real money is won or lost in those shorter sessions, okay? Um, and it can be exploited. The short session can be exploited. And I have a note here though, it's not just being exploited by you, right? We think we can come in here and hammer that hot streak, right? The casino also exploits you on those losses. If you're a person who chases loss with bigger bets, they're exploiting you. They're exploiting your, your vision of gambler's fallacy with those, that down streak can be catastrophic if they're exploiting you. You're exploiting yourself, I suppose, with that kind of betting, right? That's a thing to realize, okay? Um, when you enter the game is a big thing. Here's a set of 500 rolls. And actually, that, that set of 100 comes, comes out of this 500. The question I've got for you is, where, do you, where did you enter the game? And I'm going to actually um, draw this out for you. If you walked up to the table here, right, and you bought in at this level, you did okay, Right, you're gonna make a little bit of money, not a lot, but you have a, you, you caught a little bit of an upstreak. That's kind of cool, right? In that first, in that very first little section there, if you bought into the game here at the top of this chart, you see my mouse moving up here. If you buy in up here at the top of this chart, well, guess what? Everybody else has experienced a good run. You're coming in to a hot table. People say, "Oh, get down the hot table." You come into the hot table. What happens? Boof! Right, it goes straight down. The short game can be amazing if you hit it right, if you come into the right spot and this is your window of 100 rolls right in here. If your window of 100 rolls is this down streak in the middle where it's purple, it's a bad day for you, right? If you come into here in this slice, right, you're gonna be in this chop. You're gonna buy in, you're gonna win a little bit, lose a little bit, win a little bit, and you're gonna be basically today. We're gonna be in, a, in this choppy sort of, we're gonna tie kind of a day, right? Versus a down streak and ending on a hot streak, right? Again, 500 rolls, this is five sessions. You may only be there for one slice of this session. When did you get in and did you get rocked or did, it, or did you rock it? That's the question, right? Did you rock the short game or did you get rocked? And it all depends on when you come in, okay? I say this a lot. The short game is exploitable if you're on the good streak, if you're betting it in a smart kind of way, right? Um, the game you're actually playing, though, is this. And I know people will 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 argue with me on this point, but you are playing a long game whether you realize it or not. Okay, ten thousand rolls. That same set of outcomes, that set of five hundred, and that set of one hundred is in here somewhere. I, I I sliced it out of this thing here. Um, it's pretty flat though. Overall, it's pretty flat. It kind of leans into the house edge. It leans into probability over time, and we saw that yesterday with the house edge explanation. Um, it's also this rear is only hundred. This is ten thousand rolls. It's only hundred sessions. This is 10,000 rolls. It's 100, 100 roll sessions. That's all that that is, right? That's literally, you know, twice a weekend. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a trip to Vegas. That's, that's, think of yourself in Vegas at a table for two hours, four days in a row, right? That's a few of those trips. And this is, this is what you're seeing. You're seeing this whole thing. The, the thing that you don't realize, I think, is that you're not just seeing this. You're seeing that a bunch of times tied together, right? In the long game, Probability will always manifest itself. That's the law of large numbers. We saw it yesterday. It'll always come back to probability, right? 
and doesn't come back to probability by catching up to itself. Extra sevens come or extra sixes come. It comes back to probability because of percentages, right? 5,000 less sevens out of 10,000 rolls is a huge percentage. 5,000 less sevens out of a billion rolls is nothing. And that's what the game the casino plays, right? The actual money is won or lost over the course of time, okay? I say real money, big money is won or lost in the short streaks, in the short sessions. Actual money, the long-term money, the billions that casinos win happens across that long, that long haul. And here's, the, I think, the key point, okay? Don't forget this one. Your lifetime of sessions, if you laid them end to end, 100 today, 100 tomorrow, 100 Sunday, 100 in a month from now, if you laid all of your 100 roll sessions, every trip around the table, side by side in a big long line, guess what happens? It becomes this. You lay, you lay 100 of your last, your last 100 sessions together with your dice and everybody else's dice. You end up here. You're not here. You're there while you're at the table. You're here over the course of all your sessions. And I think this, this misnomer of we're always playing a short game, I've had people say, you're, oh, you're always playing the short game. You're not always playing the short game, okay? At the table, with your feet in the ground, you're playing a short run, but it plays part in a bigger run. And I couldn't give you a better example than what happened to me the last couple of days in my daily paycheck show, right? Last week, right, two days. I had a 68 roller, I had a 50-something roller, I had four shooters in the 20s. The week before that, I had a 50-something roller, right? We were on this amazing streak. This week, nothing. Everybody's a five roller, six rollers. It all comes back. The averages of all that comes back to, to reality, right? I won like nine or 11 days in a row, and I would have lost big money four days in a row. It always comes back to play. I can, I can sell wolf tickets all I want to when I'm doing really good and talk about all the great things I did up there in that garage all the money that I made during daily paycheck and then goes bam, bam, bam. And it's out, right? Because those sessions are not, they're independent while I'm there, but together they stack. You got to remember that, right? That fact that all your small sessions are lined up to make one giant session is being exploited. Not by you. The casino exploits that we think we're winning in the short run. You may in the long run, that's the game. The game is the long run, even though, in the short run, it sure feels like we're doing it. So again, remember this. You're playing both a short game and a long game simultaneously. You're playing them both at the table, right? You experience the short game right now in the moment. That's you're playing, you're playing that hundred rolls right now. Okay. That's where the variance lies, right? It's where you need to focus and make your best decisions in that short run. Okay. The impact of time on you is up to you. And that's my, my, my closing thought for short or long game talk is that if you're going to be there for a short period of time and it's not going well, you're in one of those down streaks right there, right? I say this a lot and it's easier said than done. Bet low when it's bad, bet high when it's good, right? You can't predict. There's no tea leaves you can read to see when it's going to get good. But I can tell you this, when it's going bad, stay down here. When it starts to get better, a little bit of increasing of your of your bets again with your wins is the way that you can kind of get better in those streaks right that's the best thing you can do in the short game is is try and not let it kill you as as much as you want to go as much as i wanted to go out today and say we're doing bad today but i really want to go out there with that bigger cross bet don't when it's not going well you got to stay here right when it's going well sure hammer it up but remember you're playing both you're playing a short game right now. You're playing a long game in your life. And I think people tend to forget that, right? A hundred sessions at the casino looks like this flat line. It really and truly does. And the casino sees you that way. So don't forget that. The casino sees you as the flat line. The casino sees you as eventually probability taking your bets the way that it ought to, the way that they expect it to. And that house set is what they're banking on. You're going to bank on these, these shorter runs on the inside here, right? Or lose a little bit. They're looking at, they don't care, right? They're playing the long game. You're playing the long game. You just may not feel like you are. So um, all that said, let's head over. Let's, let's go to my, uh, my, my, my spreadsheet. And um, I want to, I want to give you some examples of it again. Let's, let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. Um, so here is the, uh, hopefully you can see this. Well, let me uh, make this a little bit bigger. 
There we go. How's that? Does that look good? Um, I'm trying to see my screen here. Hold on one second. Let's see if that. There we go. Okay. So this is the same spreadsheet from yesterday that we looked at. And uh, this is our, our law of big numbers spreadsheet. And oh, why is my stupid face up there? There is. Is that better? Can you see? Why is my camera on? Um, that should be this screen here. There we go. That's what I want. God, sorry about that, folks. Nobody wants to see my big ugly head. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right. Um, I'll make you over here. So it's the right size. I should have done this earlier. There we go. All right. Here is the law of large number spreadsheet. I want to show you kind of what this looks like. Let's take a look at, I'm, I'm going to take these out of here for now. Um, we'll take that. Well, I'll leave it here for argument for just to show you. Um, let's look at a bunch of short runs. Okay. And this is going to be, this is the iron cross. This is the, this is the 75, 100, by the way, right over here. Um, your average win on that strategy is 85 bucks, right? You got 14 ways to win a hundred. You got 16 ways to win 75. You got six ways to lose 500. Okay. Here it is. We've rolled a, a perfect 16 sevens, right? In this particular case, right? If you were alive for every roll, you never took a roll off. Okay. 16 times you lose 500, whatever that is, 84 times you win $85, you're down 860. That's about what you would expect. That's, a, that's actually a, a perfect run. Now, this is your once around the table, right? We can play that again, right? Twice around the table tonight. Oh, we had a worse run there. Third time around the table. This is hour three. Back to 16, we're getting, seeing a pretty a pretty perfect run. There is one that went went our way. Look at that, right? We had a good run that went our way, right? In hour four, way less sevens, right? We're at 26.50 and right there, we profited there, but we're still down 5.15 for the day. And our delta, our aggregate delta is only 1.92% off the average, okay? I can take these and let's play for a weekend. Let's, again, we'll play a bunch of short runs here, right? Oop. Let's stretch it out. And the more of this I do and do and do, you'll see, look at this. Our, our delta is down at 0.2%. We're literally at the number of sevens that we should be at. After 1,600 rolls, we're down 20 grand because we had a couple of bad streaks. We had a big bad streak here, a big bad streak here, a big bad one here, right? The ones where we were below and whatever else don't quite make up for it. This is what it looks like. This is, this is how it looks in the very short term, right? Good run or a bad run, a bad run, a bad run, home run, and a home run, right? There's, there's like a weekend at the casino where if you take those, just those outcomes, you're up a little bit. You're like, hey, the Iron Cross works. I made a grand with the Iron Cross, right? And then you go back out. And there's another short run. And oh, look at that one. We got killed on that one there, right? And this is what it looks like. So these short runs stack up, right? You may think today I lost 860. Ah, damn it. Tomorrow I lost 114. You know, I, I lost three days in a row. I lost, right? Fourth day I won. You're like, yeah, I'm playing this short game, but you're not. You're playing the long game. And if we take all this crap away, right? That might be what one day looks like, right? But if we stretch that out to 10,000, 100 sessions, you'll see that your delta goes way down. We're almost exactly where we should be, right? And your net loss is enormous, right? This is, again, the way to see this, you're not playing one of these. You're playing a hundred of these, and it looks like this. A hundred of those where it works out perfectly doesn't work out so good for you, typically. The delta here is almost on point, right? And I think we get sucked into this, this idea that we're just playing this super short run every day. And although you are, and your feet are in the ground for these short runs, over time, these add up to a longer run of 1600 or 10,000 or whatever it's going to be. And that's where you end up, right? So remember, you're not playing one, you're playing all of them, right? That screen that I showed you earlier, I think is the best screen we've got where you're playing, um, you're playing, oh God, where did I go here? Why am I down there? Um, you're playing them all at the same time. You're playing a short game, 100 rolls today, that 100 rolls takes part in a longer 10,000 roll series. And I think it's, it's the reality of it, right? And I don't want to be a, a, a negative Nelly here, but it's the reality of it. We are playing the long game. Now, 
if you're not just sitting here, like I just showed you, same betting, you know, for a billion rolls, right? When you same bet for a billion rolls, you're going to get chewed up, right? That's why I say bet low. Every time you lose, you stay as, as low as you can, right? And when you start winning, you know, progressively increasing the bets to catch that little streak that you can get, that's how you can increase the power. That's how you can make the short game work for you. But I'll tell you what, the impact of that time that you're there, that's on you. That's on you. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm liking the short game a lot. I've always, I always have. Um, I'm liking the YOLO play a little better, right? I'll take that one shot at it um, and not, you know, participate in, 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 in this. I don't want to be here at the table. I'll take one at a time. I'm not going to take all this every single time. So, all right, there it is. Um, I'm going to see what questions you guys have. I'm going to go to, um, go to here. And let's see if there's anything being said in chat. Maybe there is. I don't know. Um, I'm going to first do cues. Any question? None. How about a PC? Let's see. Um, Gary says, yes. And this is so true. Um, that's because I was, I was hyper random today, right? My morning roll today is what the casino looks like. And that it's what it is, right? It's a two roller, a three roller, a five with no, a five where it's all horns. It's garbage, 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 eight roller. Garbage, garbage, 13 roller, and then a bunch of PS. Today was exactly the casino day, for sure. And, 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 I'll, and I'll tell you, that's why that come ladder strategy works. That's why it works, because it's designed for that crap, right? Um, JR says, maybe I threw out the trash. Good luck. Um, I, we'll see. I hope so. I would love to make the final 16. Um, if I do, like I said, it's going to be, if I make it, it's going to be on luck, because I'm not good, right? I'm the first to admit that I, have, I don't have the skills that some of these guys have that are actually trying it. I don't have any skill at all. So if I get in there, it's dumb luck. So yeah, uh, mark the points. I sent you the status on today's throws. I can tell you what they were. They were a big steaming pile of dog poo today. They were awful. I threw so many sevens today. My, my SRR today had to be a four. I mean, it was terrible. Um, yes, we need to get t-shirts that say the dice don't care. I actually have, I actually had a, Somewhere I've got a list. I should, I should find it, Gary. I got a list somewhere that is all my favorite crap sayings. Like, like, like that. The dice don't care, you know? Um, yeah. Like, what, what's actually, what we should do, actually, think about this. Let's, let's play Let's play it out a little bit. You know, Ben Shapiro, if you, like, you guys watch Ben Shapiro, he always says the facts don't care about your feelings. We need like, a, like, like the dice don't care about your math. Or the, 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 the dice don't care about your throw or some, something like the dice don't care about your set. Something, something like, that's funny. I'm not sure what that looks like, but yeah, something like dice don't care about the house edge or like an anti casino one. I don't know. Think about it. We should, we should do it like a whole series of, of like funny sayings, t-shirts. Um, all right. I think I'm, I think I've got Dorcel says the same bet early to collect some profits. Then up. I agree. I agree. I like to be even ish before we go. You know what I mean? Um, but honestly, I, I'll, and I'll, I'll challenge you here, Dorcel, like try this sometime in your wind crafts. You don't have to press like a maniac. You just got to get some profit play in there. So in other words, if you're going 204 across, right? And you're getting paid 50 for one, okay? Increase the bet that hit by a single unit, just by five bucks or six bucks and six and eight. Just one unit, that little tiny bit, right? Alleviates the pressure on your bankroll. Same bet the first one, second one goes up by even one unit. That one little unit on a long run eventually replaces your bet with, with, pure profit play instead of just doing a quick flip like a lot of people do where it's a it's a full press doing that full press over time increases the bets slowly over the wins you're collecting during this streak and you're increasing during the streak so when you get a nice little series where you've got 10 sevens out of 100 instead of 16 those little increments they compensate big time for the ones where you don't get it and you don't need much you say it all the time. You don't need much edge on your dice to make a difference. You don't need much edge in your betting to make a difference. You don't have to press the house max. I know people say that you do. You don't have to. As long as you're playing profit play, you're going to be in good shape. Now, if you catch the run and you can get there, great. More power to you. But um, in, in the 85% in the of the rolls that are, you know, 10 or less, same bet and a one and a one unit increment, that's a great way to play, right? And it keeps you down low when the, when, when the going is tough. So just be smart, right? Be smart about it. 
Um, I think the dice don't care about your math. There you go. We got to find, there, there's probably, can do, I can do a dice don't care about underline. And there's like a million things you can plug in there. Um, it'd be fun to, to do some of that. Anyway, let's get out of here. It's uh, 835. Um, you know what we should do? Let's go play some craps. Let's go to my, my, my table. Um, since I'm done talking today, um, let's go to my, I don't even know if the light works. Let me go see if, if I can get, get a light on back there. And um, let's zoom in like this. Let's play a little bit. Oh man, the, the camera's in the wrong spot. Give me one second here. Let me go to OBS. OBS bot. That camera is actually leaned in the wrong direction. So it should be here. That's wrong too. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, hmm. Well, it's fine. You, the thing is that the dice, the dice little view down there at the bottom is in the wrong spot. Anyway, let's play a little bit. Let's go. Let's do some stuff. Let's do um, all this talk about the short game, right? Um, one way to play the short game, as we've been talking about, is betting low when it's not good, betting high when it is good. And to get a bunch of trials in, we can do a little field bet. And by the way, I got Jeremy's chips out here. These are Jeremy's Color Up um, membership chips that came in the mail the other day. Um, let's do a little, a little field play. I'm going to do a little 200 bucks in the rack here, okay? And we'll do like a, a little five dollar field play, okay? Just because it can be fast. There's a, there's five in the field, and there's five in there, and we're going to just bet low when we're not winning. And we're going to bet up when we are winning. And that's basically it. We're going to same bet the first one if we catch a win. And um, then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll up it if we, if we catch a second one. I think, which one is actually? Uh, there's a 6 2 8. That'll lose. I'm not going to work the puck. I'm just going to put bets up there. Again, bet low when you're not winning, right? We're not going to go and, and try and, and hammer them with a negative progression. We're going to take that. That's a win. The same bet our win the first time. That's Duracell's point, right? Same bet your win. Okay, well, we didn't get a, a second win. No biggie. Just an exchange, right? There's a 10. Nice. 6 4 10. Awesome. Take it. Same bet that first one. And then from there on, if we catch them, we'll up the pole. This table's kind of choppy right now, right? Doesn't matter. Um, we're not going to go and chase the chop. We're not going to do anything weird. We're just going to bet low. Bet low when we're not winning. Right, there's another win. Same bet. We're just hanging around right now. We got to get. We got to get two in a row at some point, right? Five, three, eight. Again, we'll lose it. Not going to chase it. Same bet. I think we're down a unit right now. Eight, four. Good. Same bet. The first one. Boy, we cannot get two in a row to save our lives here, right? There's a loss. Two in a row. Come on. Can I get two fields in a row? Please, sir. There's a four. Two fields in a row. Let's do it. Same bet one of them. Come on. Two fields in a row. We got it. Yay. All right. So when it's not going well, we 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 same but we we stay low level. The first hit we got in the rack, the second hit we got in a row. Stack into a one unit press. There's a three. Now we have three in a row, so check it out. We're gonna pay two, right? A little tiny press, pull one back. Now, bankroll is intact, three units in profit. We catch a little bit of a run. There's a nine, right? Even a one unit press is great, right? There's a three unit win, right? A one unit press, and now we have locked profit in a row. We're feeling pretty good about ourselves. As a matter of fact, with a $200 bankroll, that's 30 bucks, right? You're working on 15% right now, which, which ain't hay, okay? There we go. Four units are out there, though. That's all profit play. And there's the midnight. That'll pay uh, uh, 20 times three. Uh, what is that, 60 bucks? Right, is that right? 60 bucks, boom. How about us, right? There's that little, you're in that spike. Boom, you're in a nice little spike right now in that short game. Right, time is under your control. It's the time you spend at tables under your control. Okay, let's go ahead and go up one unit there. Right, we'll play this until we lose it out. And that's what I would do. If this is me playing at a casino and I had this little run here, I'm playing until this run stops. We got well over goal. We play it until we're done, and there it is. There's a five. Done. Right, go home. 
for 200 bucks, that's a pretty good little profit right there. That's uh, that feels like 65 bucks. That's that's a lot. That's a big that's a big percentage out of 200 dollars, right? Cool, right? That's again, not that that's a it's a way to win craps, right? But it's a way to stay stay careful when it ain't going so well. And if you do catch a little tiny one, and you get a little bit of a pressing action there, you're going to be okay, right? That chop, we just tied. We were at 20, we were at even bankroll that entire chop. Up one, down one, up one, down one, right? Same betting, same betting, it, right? We were, we stayed fine. That's not a bad way to live, right? When it's not going so great. And then, okay, we hit a little run, and we go home. Now, remember, that run that we just did of 15 was the short game. For that particular day. Now, I come back after lunch and play it again. This feels like it's a new session. Matter of fact, we're going to get different dice. It's a, it's a whole new session. Different dice, different everything, right? It's still part of the same run, right? You're going to stack those 20 rolls and the next 20 rolls together. It's all part of my own slice of the law of big numbers, right? You have your own, you have your own run. Right, same bet the first one, bankroll's even, that's profit. But you're playing in your own version of the law of big numbers. Now, the casino's got their billion, you have your billion. And where are you in your billion rolls? Right, here's again set two of our billion. 